I am really looking forward to this interesting and insightful conversation with Ashley, who is a holistic nutritionist and a hormone specialist. Do you want to share, kind of give them maybe a little bit of information about what it is that we're talking about today? Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to break that down a little bit for us in terms of how we can use food to help support our cycles in those times where we don't feel so good or how to prepare for that ahead of time so that we don't have those painful periods, uncomfortable periods, PMS, mood changes, and we feel mm -hmm. a little more empowered and in control of what's happening in our body. You know, I feel like it's such a gift to know this information and to be educated about it when you're young as well, because you just have an understanding of how your body works, how to take care of it properly, um, rather than waiting until you have an actual issue on your hands and then start taking care of it. So that's why I really wanted to kind of cover the subject with you. Tell us more. The first thing is we all know that food sets a tone for how we feel. So we know that after we eat a meal, we can feel it within a few hours. Sometimes some of us are feeling brain fog the next morning when we wake up. Um, but it, a lot of us are not thinking about how food sets the tone for our menstrual cycle. So what we eat um, in the weeks leading up to our, our period it actually has a massive impact on how we're feeling and whether or not we're gonna have symptoms related um, to that cycle or not. So I like to approach it from a food first philosophy because that's what's accessible to all of us. And our, that's actually what our body knows best. So we see a lot of these detox teas and other crazy things going on out there. But you and me both being nutritionists know that like functional food does actually start to change what's happening in your body. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to introduce this concept of seed cycling. And I don't know if you've heard of it before. No, but it's so simple. Um, and it's one of my favorite ways to start to um, address hormonal imbalances. So in, we are going to divide our menstrual cycle into two parts. Um, and your menstrual cycle starts on day one when you first get your period. And then the first half is where estrogen is really important. So our body wants to start to build up estrogen levels. And this is preparing for us to ovulate. If you are trying to conceive, this is really important. If you're not, it's less important for you. Mm -hmm. um, but in this cycle, we can use ground flaxseed. So I love seeds. There's four different seeds that we're going to pull in. We can use ground flaxseed and pumpkin seed. And both of these actually help to support estrogen production. And estrogen is really important in regulating our menstrual cycle. And so both of those contain uh, phytoestrogens and zinc, and those actually really help to boost up those estrogen levels. So day one to 14 is called our follicular phase, and we're gonna mm -hmm. focus on flax and pumpkin seed. And I love to just throw these in the blender. If you have a coffee grinder, blender, food processor, nice and simple, throw them in a mason jar and keep those in the fridge. So that's phase one. And then phase two is our luteal phase, and this is day 15 to 28. So this is the later half of our cycle where a lot of women identify with having PMS. Um, maybe you have breast tenderness, irritability, you feel moody, maybe you just don't feel really feel on your A game anymore. Brain fog is a big one for a lot of us. Mm. And so this is where progesterone is the superstar. So it's really important to have an ele or to get a progesterone spike here in this start of this part of the cycle. And progesterone, oddly enough, is a calming hormone. So it's anti-anxiety. And for a lot of us, we experience anxiety leading up to our menstrual cycle and don't really understand why. A little more anxiety, a little more irritability. And um, a lot of that is related to decreased levels of progesterone. And I see this commonly when I do Dutch hormone testing with my clients, mm -hmm. um, really low levels of progesterone. So for that part of the cycle, I love to bring in sunflower seeds and sesame seeds. And it sounds weird, um, but they're actually really delicious. Those in particular help to boost progesterone by um, being abundant in zinc. We heard a lot about zinc with this whole COVID. Zinc is great for our immune system, but also for our hormones as well. Mm -hmm. And it has um, high levels of vitamin E, which we need as a raw material to make progesterone. You can use these as like a simple thing that you would add to smoothies. You know, one of the biggest challenges I see with people is um, accessibility of like, oh, I'm not ready to commit financially or, you know, uh, supplements cost a lot. It's not really in my budget. And I love seed cycling because it's something we can all access. It's super mm -hmm. simple um, and we can just really make it easy and enjoyable as well. That's amazing. So regarding the quantity, I know that you mentioned two tablespoons. Yeah, one to two of the mix is great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. And then does this help as well when they're on the pill? 
Yeah, so the pill is interesting because what it does is it actually takes away our, our body's ability to ovulate, which means we don't make progesterone. So definitely mm. it's going to help on the pill because it will boost any ability of the body to make naturally progesterone or to even start to get some of those raw materials in, including um, B6, which is really essential for building our hormones. So it's not going to help in terms of fertility, obviously, on the pill. But if you are experiencing some side effects um, in terms of your cycle, that's definitely going to help. Mm -hmm. And what about menopause? Because I did see a few questions about that. Great question. So if, for people who are in perimenopause, this is especially helpful because their estrogen and progesterone levels are starting to ebb and flow. And heading into menopause, um, you can definitely still seed cycle. You're going to get all the nutritional benefits, the zinc, the phytoestrogens, and things like that. Um, but it's not going to be as impactful in terms of your actual cycle because um, you once mm -hmm. the definition of menopause is you haven't had a cycle for a year. A couple of questions about uh, period cramps. Okay. Do you have any recommendation there? Absolutely. So period cramps are definitely a symptom of an imbalance in your cycle, often related to inflammation. So I really mm -hmm. like to start from um, that space of thinking of what is causing inflammation in your body. For a lot of us, that's refined sugars. Um, it's eating foods that we're allergic to. So there's this classic theme out there with nutritionists of getting rid of dairy and gluten in your diet. And while I think that could be beneficial for some of us, some of us are actually sensitive or allergic to foods that far beyond that. For a lot of my clients, it's eggs um, or things mm. like that. So tuning into your body is so important, kind of listening in as you eat things, noticing um, and getting rid of things that are causing that inflammation ongoing. Um, for acute period pain, I love ginger. So whether you can get your hands on fresh ginger, ginger chews, ginger pills, um, it's really great um, antispasmodic. So it's really great for um, reducing cramps. I saw a question here about insulin resistance, and I want to talk about the importance of insulin resistance and blood sugar, um, especially that impact on our one anxiety levels and mood, but specifically on our hormones. And I really like to um, work at balancing blood sugar. And one of the easy ways to do that when we eat a meal is do we have proteins, healthy fat and complex carbs in there? And so mm -hmm. that might look as simple as, you know, eating a date with almond butter versus just eating a date. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the um, and starting to layer those um, healthy proteins and fats together. Mm -hmm. And some of my favorite healthy fats for hormones are, again, the nuts and seeds that we talked about. Um, I love walnuts, salmon or trout. So think of like the fatty fish and getting those omegas in there. And avocado is a classic one as well. Mm -hmm. Can seed cycling help with period-related acne? Yeah, absolutely can help with that. So period-related acne is often related to androgens. That's an elevated um, level of testosterone in the body. It's, androgen is a type of testosterone. It's a male hormone, and it often causes acne. It also causes things like irritability and low libido um, and other challenges. And so when we look at that shows up classically in PCOS, PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Thank you. And it's often a combination of elevated androgens and elevated estrogens. Mm. And um, so acne really, zinc is one of my favorite nutrients to help support acne. And again, the pumpkin seeds being really high in zinc would help in terms of the seed cycling. But for um, hormone related acne, you can try it. Start with the seed cycling. One thing that's really important to know, and I feel a lot of my, I see this with a lot of my clients, is the body takes time. So yeah. for, we say in holistic medicine, for every year you've been dealing with something, give it a month of solid, mm -hmm. consistent effort, right? So if you've been mm -hmm. dealing with acne for three years, it's going to take you three months to get there. Zinc is one of my favorite acne um, nutrients. And then looking at ways you can lower androgens, which is really important. How do you control mood swings? So mood swings are often related to, uh, well, one, external sources. So really evaluating like your environment, toxic relationships, triggers, um, mm. but also often related to progesterone, low levels of progesterone, um, and also related to andro elevated androgens. So really working, seed cycling will be a great way um, to start to prevent mood swings for sure. And regulating your blood sugar is very important. We mentioned the pill and about the seed cycling there. What about IUD? Great question. You can still seed cycle while you have an IUD. It might be harder to, for you to find the rhythm in terms of days. And a lot of my clients without a regular cycle, I get them to sync it up with the moon. It sounds weird, but if you think about it, the moon cycle 
is 28 mm -hmm. days and the female menstrual cycle is 28 days. And so that is a way that we actually can sync up for a lot of uh, my clients who have lost their period altogether, or maybe they're in menopause, but they want to start to find some natural rhythms in their life. Um, mm -hmm. They can sync it up with the moon as well. Yes, and I'm excited to continue um, having conversations with you when it comes to, you know, our body's health. So if you guys have any specific topics that you want us to cover, um, definitely let us know. Thank Sorry, you, Ashley. Bye. Bye.